This is a video clip I shot using the regular camera mode. In other words, I didn't use log. But if we want more detail in the shadows, we need to use log, right? Or I can just do this. Push up the gain in the shadows. And now there's more detail in those areas. Is it really that simple? In this video I'm going to explain how and why to shoot and grade log footage created using your smartphone. I'll show you how to achieve this using two camera apps, Filmic Pro and MC Pro 24 FPS. Then I will grade the footage in LumaFusion on my iPad Pro. One of the reasons recording in log has become so popular is that it's often associated with the idea of better image quality. Color grading is one of the most tricky things to get right and truly make your video look more cinematic and more professional. Therefore, it's worth taking some time to understand the principles and best practices when shooting and grading log. In my opinion, you should really have an understanding of what is going on inside your smartphone when you shoot video, before you start using a log profile. Right, I'm going to go through some background first, but if you just want to skip to the app tutorials, I've time-coded everything for you. Log is short for logarithmic. In mathematics, the logarithm is the inverse function to exponation. I don't have a clue what I just said, and most likely neither do you. But let's try and make this accessible to non-scientists and non-mathematicians. Basically, a frame of digital video is composed of a set of digital exposure values. And these values get encoded into a video file as it's recorded onto a digital camera's memory. And that encoding process always involves compression. Without using a log setting, our smartphones and other cameras record what is known as linear. There's a whole lot of science behind this, but basically on a graph it looks like this. Values at the bottom left are black and shadows, while top right you find the white and highlights. In the middle are the midtones. That's why log profiles are sometimes called curves. For example, in MC Pro 24 FPS, every time you choose a log profile, you see it represented graphically as a curve. When you look at a log curve, you can see that the mid-tones are pushed up. Pleasing contrast in an image is created by reducing the mid-tones. Therefore, increasing the mid-tones reduces the contrast of the video. And that's why the log profile looks washed out. While a linear profile creates a nice looking image, at the same time, a large portion of the digital information is concentrated at the top, where the whites are. The lower half, the dark half, might end up with only a sixteenth of the entire bit depth of your image. So what a log curve does is share this information out more equally. And, so the theory goes, retains more shadow details for us to work with later. Using a linear profile, if we increase exposure to get at those shadow details, all the whites get blown out. And blown out means lost forever. Here's a clip where I deliberately blew out the whites, because I liked the ghostly look of it. All that information in the sky is gone. And when I came to edit, I couldn't change my mind. I couldn't just bring down brightness to reveal the sky again. So I'm stuck with how it looks. Why not just boost the shadows? Well, the answer is you can. But some will tell you the image won't tolerate it because there's so little digital information recorded in the shadows. Therefore, the result will be a pixelated video with banding and extra noise. But let's see what we can do and compare. Then I'll let you decide which method comes out better. One problem with shooting in log format in 8-bit color with an H.264 or H.265 codec is that these codecs are heavily compressed and 8-bit color leaves you with a small amount of information to work with. As when I overexposed that image and information was lost, 8-bit color also loses information. But the codec you use does it in such a way that it still carries enough range of colors and tones to look good on your TV. In an 8-bit video file, like those recorded by most consumer and prosumer gear, there are 256 possible exposure representations available across the entire spectrum, starting from absolute black to super white. So if your video has blown out whites, those whites are made up of that 255 value. Meanwhile, 10-bit video contains up to 1024 value levels per channel. 
So that's obviously quite a big difference in the amount of image information retained in the file. Essentially, 10-bit video gives you more dynamic range. However, a log profile in your smartphone also promises you a greater dynamic range. Dynamic range describes the ratio between the brightest and darkest parts of an image, from pure black to brightest white. But even the best digital cameras capture only about half as much as the human eye. If a camera can only capture a low dynamic range, the blacks and the whites get crushed or blown out more easily. With a higher dynamic range, a camera can capture more details in the dark and light areas. For example, when you're filming a skyline, you're dealing with a scene which has a big tonal range between the brighter and the darker parts, and so your camera sensor struggles to capture it all. And then either the sky gets blown out or the landscape is crushed to black. With greater dynamic range, the sky will be less blown out or the landscape less crushed, and perhaps you will see more details of the land and the trees. Digital information for audio and video files needs to be compressed, otherwise the files would not be manageable. And compression is what makes digital media usable, but it also requires that much of the information captured by the camera sensor is discarded. The way this information is discarded is determined by the codec. When played back, an approximation of the original is created. And generally speaking, the more you compress a video file, the more data is thrown out, and the worse the approximation looks versus the original. So when played back, an approximation of the original is created. And generally speaking, the more you compress a video file, the more the data is thrown out, and the worse the approximation ends up looking versus what it looks like in real life. So, when we see references to H.264 and H.265 files, this is the name given to different methods of compression. So, H.264 is uh, otherwise known as AVC, which stands for Advanced Video Coding. And that is currently the codec most commonly used in consumer cameras and smartphones. H.265, or HEVC, as it's otherwise known, which stands for High Efficiency Video Coding, is a newer codec and it's better at compressing video information, therefore you can achieve higher quality video while using up less hard drive space. So why is this important? Well, this is important because shooting and grading log video is all about the amount of digital information available in the file you are working on. Compression in digital media is basically a science developed to trick your eyes and ears into thinking you're seeing and hearing more information than is actually available. In other words, these codecs are finely tuned processes whereby the information is trimmed and tweaked and filtered to create something that is pleasing to the ears and eyes. And this is what makes streaming video possible. Without these codecs, there would be no YouTube, no Netflix, no Amazon Prime. It just wouldn't be practically possible to deliver uncompressed video over a broadband or Wi-Fi connection. So that's why these codecs are called delivery formats. They're designed to deliver finished video. It's like a baked cake covered in icing and decoration. And while this cake contains flour, water and eggs and everything, you can no longer cook with these ingredients because it's done, it's baked, that's it. You can't use those ingredients to make another cake. Uh, the problem comes when you want to change the look of this video. In a sense, it's like trying to rebake a cake that's already baked. And you'd most likely end up with a horrible mess and it would taste pretty disgusting. So, shooting in a log format is kind of like buying a cake-making kit. Everything has been prepared, but it's not quite finished, and it needs you to do some extra work to make it edible. So, the theory is that when you shoot log, less information is discarded, and therefore, when you come to grade, you have more of those cake ingredients to work with. But wait, if we're retaining more information than logically, the file should be bigger, right? Well, actually, yes, you're right. But when we shoot log, we don't end up with bigger files, so they can't really retain more information. That's right, because they're the same H.264 or H.265 files as before, with the same digital information as if we shot without log. So, what's going on? When people talk about log retaining more image information, what they really mean is log retains different information. Information more suited to playing around with later. At least that's what we hope. 
What log does is reduce contrast and saturation. This creates a washed out video where everything looks kind of grey. The dynamics of the image are turned right down. And in theory, this makes it just a little bit easier to move the image in a new direction. If you want to shoot video using Filmic Pro's Log version 2, you will need to purchase the Cinematographer's Kit, which is an in-app purchase. If you tap the three color circles in the bottom left corner, you open up various options. The top setting is white balance. Below that is the Cinematographer's Kit. So now all you do is tap the Log Version 2 option on the right of the four options. And when you tap this Log Version 2, you can see the histogram here changes. It's recommended that when you shoot Log with Filmic that you use the highest bitrate possible, which is Filmic Extreme. So if we tap out of this screen then open up the settings menu by tapping the cog icon, tap Resolution and make sure you set bitrate to Filmic Extreme. By the way, when we talk about retaining more information in the video, bitrate is another way to do that. Shooting with a high bitrate also means more color and tone information is retained. Another recommendation for shooting log is to use the lowest possible ISO setting. On my device, a Samsung Note 20 Ultra, that is 50. The reason for this is that log users have found they get extra noise. And less ISO means less noise. Now I'll import this Filmic Pro Log version 2 footage into LumaFusion. Place it on the timeline, then edit this clip by tapping the pencil icon. So now I tap color and effects at the bottom, then top right we need to select the cube icon, which is where we find LumaFusion LUTs and any user LUTs that we've imported. In LumaFusion you'll find the official Filmic Pro D-Log version 2 already here. All you have to do is tap this and you will convert your footage to a Rec 709 color space. What is Rec 709 color space? Rec 709 is the most common color space for video projects. For example, for broadcast, Rec 709 is most likely what you need to work and monitor in. It's basically um, like an agreed standard, which works well on HD TV monitors. Okay, so now we're set up and ready to start grading. MC Pro 24 FPS is only for Android, unfortunately. But the good news is, it has very advanced log settings. Whereas other apps give you the option of log or no log, MC Pro 24 FPS gives you a ton of options. Near the left corner, below the exposure wheel, there are three buttons. The left button is for gamma curves. The middle button is simply to lock white balance. And on the right, you get the GPU curves. The left and right buttons access a host of different log profiles. This app gives you over 20 options, and the recent update added even more options. So I think only the most dedicated MC Pro 24 FPS users will actually use all these different options. And there's plenty here to mess about with and experiment with. So first of all, open up the Gamma Curve which is the ones that I'm going to use. So tap the word auto boxed in red to open up a list of possible gamma curves. The app's developer tells me there's a quality difference going from 10-bit raw as highest down to GPU curve as lowest. So gamma curve should give you better quality video than GPU curve. I'm going to choose MSLog 100%. For no other reason than I tried some of the others and it didn't quite come out that well. So in camera settings, I set bitrate to 100 megabits per second. And that is the highest I can go with this device before going into the red. Now I can choose higher, but the red indicates that it might not work too well. So now I'll shoot some video and import it into LumaFusion. Once the clip is in LumaFusion, place it on the timeline. Same as before, edit clip and go to color and effects. Now we need to import a LUT from the MC Pro 24FPS website. Download the LUTs and then choose the one appropriate to the log profile you're using. In my case, MS Log 100%. LumaFusion can import Cube and 3DL files. So here we have the MS Log 100%, which converts to Rec 709 and is at the same time a Cube file. So locate that file where you have placed it 
wherever you want to import it from and import. Now it pops up in your user LUTs for you to use whenever you need it. So I tap that and now I have converted the clip to the Rec 709 color space. And again, we're ready to start adding our own adjustments. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next video.